Hi, this is Greg Lamberson, the filmmaker behind Slime City and Killer Rack and the upcoming Johnny Gruesome. I'm one of the founders of Buffalo Dreams Fantastic Film Festival, and you are listening to the 13th Wolfman. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman. You know who I have back with me. I have Greg Lamberson. If you don't know who he is, he's a writer, director, novelist. He's also the co-founder of the Buffalo Dreams Film Festival. Welcome back to Sit Down, Greg. I'm happy to be here, although I never leave here. This is where I am all the time. Yeah, so I mean, we're just we were just kind of like chewing on it a second ago, but let's talk about the Buffalo Dreams Film Festival. How long has this been in uh how long has this been going on? Because you're a co-founder of it. Yeah, my partner, Chris Fioli, and I founded this festival five years ago. We had a previous festival for three years that we had with a third partner, but we had to get rid of him. So we shut that festival down and rebranded just the two of us. So we've been running a festival together for eight years, uh, but this incarnation, five. Cool. And uh, the, 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 thing that, the thing that I keep hearing is 110 movies. That's a lot of movies for a film festival. Well, it breaks down to 40 features and 70 shorts. Normally, in the past, when we've also been 10 days, this year we had to go to 11. Uh, we've had maybe 25 features. So we are at 110 because a lot of the shorts we're showing are shorts and not these medium-length films, you know, like the 45-minute films that, that can sometimes be hard to, to schedule. But it's a lot, yeah. I know that one of the big features that you got this year is uh, Lloyd Kaufman's Re Return to Return to Newcomb High Volume 2. Yeah, we actually had the world premiere of Return to Newcomb High, the first volume, and Lloyd came out for that one. He's not coming out for part two. Um, but a busload of trauma fans who had worked on the film, I guess it drove around the country picking people up, came to the festival, and it was the craziest night we've ever had. I mean, Lloyd spent an hour on introductions and thanking people and doing Lloyd shtick. And then we did the movie. And then he stood in the theater for an hour and a half, signing every autograph he could, posing for every picture he could. We had to get permission from the theater to stay there late. And then he went out, went out partying with those people all night. So it was a huge, huge night. Uh, the bus got a ticket, I hear. Um, hopefully it'll be wild for part two, but not quite as uh, out of control. Yeah, Lloyd's a great man. We've, we've had him on the Dorkening twice. I've had him on sit down a couple of times. And I've never, I've never met a kinder gentleman, you know, that, that likes to deal with his fans as much as he does, you know? No, he definitely does. Um, and so, uh, the both parts were filmed in Niagara Falls, so there's a big local interest in them. So it, it should be a big show for us. I need to ask you about uh, a movie. You, I need to ask you about Johnny Gruesome and where that is right now. It's finished. It's complete. Something is happening, but I'm not allowed to say what. Fair enough. I just want to know that it's finished and it's complete. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that sometime after the festival, there will be an announcement. I'm good with that. I just, I mean, after the festival, I mean. it's, it's one of those movies been waiting around for, for a while, you know, and just. I have two car door magnets that say Johnny Gruesome on my car. <laughs> so people ask me about it everywhere. Just today, I had to get my, uh, I had to get my car fixed and the mechanics were asking me about it. So, um, I've been I've been teasing people about this for a year now, so I'm anxious to get it out. Yeah, it's it's I'm I'm anxious to see it. This blue haired girl is wearing the official Johnny Gruesome t shirt. There we go. Love You've the had hair. Your <laughs> <laughs> She's in the film. She has a scene. She's uh your daughter's been in quite a few of your movies. She's had like a few lines here, a few lines there. Um, I don't know if you read the book, Johnny Gruesome, but there's a scene where Johnny is walking through a field after he's had a really bad day. He's been shot by a blind shopkeeper. He's been hit by the mayor's wife in, a, in an SUV and his, his bones are broken and he's just kind of humiliated. And some kids pelt him with um, snowballs in the book, water balloons in the movie. 
and he turns around and boys tear off leaving behind one little girl and it's supposed to be like the, the frankenstein monster and the little girl so there's yeah. this real uh, two-page dialogue scene between them and you're left wondering is he going to kill this kid or, or what and uh it's the favorite scene of a lot of people who read the book, and we kept it in the movie, and she got the part. Okay, I haven't read the book, so I, I now now you just see you did it again, man. Yeah, you always come back here teasing a little bit more about this movie and make me want to see it even more and more. You know, I, there are a lot of allusions to Frankenstein in the book, even though it's a teenage zombie movie. Yeah, that's another thing. You're a novelist. I mean, you've written a lot of a lot of stuff. You you wrote the you wrote the Frenzy Werewolf trilogy, you know, which is awesome. But I mean, when you got into were you into movies when you became a novelist, or did you start out as a novelist and got into movies? Well, I started making. I made my first feature when I was 21. Slime City. Slime Films City. were always my goal. There came a point where I just realized that. My budgets were getting smaller instead of bigger, and I couldn't tell the stories I wanted to. So I took the, the Frenzy Way, the first of the Frenzy Wolves books, and, and a script called The Forever Man, which was the first of the Jake Elman books. And I turned those scripts into books that have much you know, bigger scope than any of the goofy little films I did. Um, so I moved into writing books thinking, okay, this is the way I'm going to go. I'll create these properties that can be adapted by other people. And uh, then digital formats became popular and I got back into film. So there were there were quite a few years there where I was juggling films and books. Right now I'm primarily focusing on books and TV movie projects based on the books. I'm working with uh, George Mahalka, who directed the original My Bloody Valentine. He's been developing my Jake Hellman books as a series. And I'm working with Craig Sheffer, the star of Nightbreed, on uh, an adaptation of a Bikers vs. Zombies book I wrote called Carnage Road. Oh, dude, sounds. I I well, I'm a big werewolf fan. I mean, my name says it all. The Thirteenth Wolf Man, you know. So I I was all all over the the frenzy novels, you know. And I'm well, like, I my next film project just might be something that you'll be really interested in, then, but uh, it's under wraps. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it after the show. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm good at that. So, how how big of an audience are you expecting at the at the Buffalo Dreams Film Festival? You know, it, it varies. Um, we're what we generally get is we have one big film. I assume it's Return to Newcomb High that maybe does a sellout, and then we have several films where we get maybe a hundred people, and then the rest of the films can be anywhere from thirty people to in a matinee show. We may only have ten people sitting in an audience watching. Uh, a foreign film we brought over. Uh, but we have diehards who try to see everything, and we make it harder for them every year. Uh, one of the re ways we were able to expand the schedule this year is uh, we used to start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and last year I noticed that the theater was actually open at 11 a.m. because it's in a mall. So that allowed us to add a whole um, a whole feature to the, the, the festival. Yeah. I tried doing that one year at SIF when I was younger, to, to sit through all the movies, the Seattle International Film Festival. Yep. Uh, I did not make it. I, I think I got about halfway, and I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> um, the problem I have is, uh, you know, we're run Chris and I are running the show, and uh, even if things slow down enough that we can go in and watch a movie, we're just so keyed up from all the running around we've moved been doing that we don't bother then near the end of the festival we'll go in and actually try and watch something and enjoy it and we both fall asleep <laughs> so, so what yeah so so what's the one movie i mean besides return return to newcomb high what's the one movie you're hoping gets a decent reception um our two saturday night films and we obviously schedule them on saturday night because we believe in them our uh, Canadian film called Buckout Road, okay. which is written and directed by uh, Mark Curry Holmes, who was in Wrong Turn 2. They describe it as a cross between urban legend and the omen. It's also got some Elm Street in there, 
but it's a movie with really high production value. I mean, to me, it looks like a $2 million film and they usually wow. don't. And it's really well made and Danny Glover's in it. So, I mean, it's not, a, it's not cheap. And I, I'm sure they're going to get a decent distribution deal on that film. So you will hear of Buckout Road again. We have the New York State premiere of that, I think. And then right after that, we have a movie that the Wolfman would love. Uh, new film from Todd Sheets, a werewolf film called Bone Hill Road. I've heard and about this. Fantastic. Well, he was crowdfunding for it, you know, like six months ago. And I saw that he was scheduling his premiere for this month which is really fast. And I contacted him right away. And I said, we would love to have this film. We've, we've only had a few werewolf films uh, over the years and they've all been really popular. And this one, just because I know they went all out with the, uh, the practical werewolf and effects and stuff, yeah. I knew it was going to be good. It's even better than I thought. I think uh, when the big transformation occurs in the last act, people are going to go nuts for this. Cool. cool. Well, well, Greg, we're going to have to start setting up for the live show. So uh, can, if people are looking for you, where can they find you? Easiest to find me on Facebook. I have a personal page. I have a, an author filmmaker page. Buffalo Dreams has a page. Okay. So for Greg Lamberson, of course, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl.